When South Carolina seceded from the United States, and six more states followed immediately, there was a strong perception that an elite slaveholding minority with significant political influence had forced the issue and that an appeal to unionist patriotism could bring the country back together. Therefore, the incoming Secretary of State, William Henry Seward, started to loosely talk about the possibility of causing a foreign war to reunite the country. However, one of the earliest statements made by Seward about causing a war with France, Great Britain or Spain may not have been his own words. Nevertheless, Secretary of State Seward was very interested under early April 1862 to bring about a foreign war to reunify the country. In early 1862, William Henry Seward allegedly stated, If the Lord would only give the United States an excuse for a war with England, France or Spain, that would be the best means of re-establishing internal peace. This is probably one of the most famous and most widely quoted sentences in the diplomatic history of the War of the Rebellion. The quote often serves to illustrate Seward's attempt to prevent the outbreak of conflict by instigating a foreign war. The quote, along with Seward's infamous April Fool's Day memorandum to President Abraham Lincoln, has provided the basis of what has become known as Seward's foreign war panacea. Seward's plan was to provoke a conflict with a European colonial power over an outstanding issue in the Americas as a way to remind Southerners of their duty to defend the United States, thus ending the secession crisis short of war. Following Abraham Lincoln's election victory, seven southern states seceded from the Union, and Washington was abuzz trying to find a compromise solution until hours before Lincoln's inaugural. Especially Lincoln's elected Secretary of State operated under the assumption that there was a substantial Unionist population in the South, which needed time to regain political influence. Seward had a long-standing interest in foreign relations, and had used anti-British sentiments for his own political advancement. As a senator, he had frequently met with diplomatic representatives in Washington. Among Seward's acquaintances was Rudolf M. Schleiden, who was one of the three German diplomats in Washington. Born in the Duchy of Holstein, Schleiden had participated in the 1848 uprising of his home region, after which he successfully lobbied for Bremen's new minister residency in Washington. He is too German colleagues were the Prussian minister Friedrich Freiherr von Gerold and the Austrian minister Georg Ritter von Hülsemann. Few remember Schleiden and his work today, but he was much better connected than von Gerold and rivaled only by his British minister Richard Bickerton Purnell, Lord Lyons, when it came to trade and maritime law questions. Schleiden was well aware of Seward's political motivated animosity towards Great Britain, which was no secret in Washington's diplomatic corps. Already in December, well before South Carolina seceded, the British minister had reported to Foreign Secretary Lord John Russell about Seward's belligerent attitude. 
Lyons' fears soon materialized in many off-handed statements by Seward at Washington dinner parties. On January 29, Schleiden included the aforementioned sentence in his report to the government in Bremen. At the start of the paragraph, Schleiden explained that Seward still assumed that preservation of the Union was a distinct possibility. Schleiden editorialized that such an outcome was very unlikely. Seward supposedly saw secession just as another form of party politics that had become more violent than normal, but that a foreign war would bring the country back together. Following his summary of the conversation with the senator, Schleiden mentions the infamous sentence. There are no quotation marks, which indicates that not Seward, but Schleiden is speaking, and that the words placed in Seward's mouth are actually those of Bremen's minister resident. When it came to official correspondence, Schleiden was a meticulous reporter. He would not have forgotten quotation marks if the words were directly from Seward, which he shows on a number of occasions in other letters. The statement is likely Schleiden's, but this does not negate Seward's interest in starting a foreign war to bring the two sections together again. Seward's desire to end secession and prevent war by precipitating a foreign war continued even after Lincoln's inaugural. On April 1st, almost a month after assuming office, Seward sent a brief missive to Lincoln with policy suggestions, commonly known as his April Fool's Day Memoranda. Prominent among the suggestions was to demand explanations from France and Spain, Great Britain, Russia, Mexico and other Latin American countries and potentially to court war against France or Spain. Seward hoped such a conflict could unify the country, even as the country was less than two weeks from the first shots of war. Seward was still under the illusion that Unionist sentiments were strong throughout the South, and Southern Unionists could still preserve the Union. However, even after the first shots on Fort Sumter, Seward remained interested in a peaceful reunification of the country, and Schleiden offered him a tool to do so again in April, as we'll see in the next episode.